All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use uh, the tree-based classification algorithm called C5.0 to gather insightful interactions from a data set and also automate the building of a, uh, of a reporting pipeline. What's cool about C5.0, it's a bit like random forest, it's going to take random sets of your data set, of your data, and figure out which are the ones that provide the most lift for a particular outcome. And C5 has the, the, the added advantage is that it can then output the findings, the trees, uh, um, of, its, uh, of what it learned while it was modeling your data. So it's really cool, and it's not that hard to get it into a report format. Um, my name is Manuel, I'm a data scientist, and I have used C5.0 to do this, to basically uh, take a customer's data and quickly, easily learn, you know, get some basic, uh, interesting insight from the data so I could quickly present uh, a report uh, about, this, about the data. As with all my videos, as always, uh, everything is on the blog. So the code, uh, additional information, links, etc. Everything is on, on, on the blog. So just go there. It's at amunatagi.github.io. It should be on your screen and in, in the description as well. So no need to you know copy the code off the video. And let's just jump right in. Um, we are going to use the um, the customer churn data set that's built into the C5.0 uh, R library. So if you don't have C5.0 install it first thing you need to do and we're going to use the toy data set that comes with 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 the library called customer churn um, it's a, it, it has the usage records uh, for a phone company a fictional phone company and information such as you know um, the amount of, of uh, day calls night calls uh, uh, voicemail do they have voicemail do they have international calls how many times they called customer service and importantly if that customer ended up churning meaning ended up canceling their account and moving on or ended up staying um, and this is kind of what you can expect out of this, this, you know, this, this exercise. There are three, um, I'm presenting three rules, right? But imagine, you know, the customer gives you a data set, very large. You could have thousands of rules and you pick the best ones to present back, you know, to your customer. Uh, let me read, let me, let's walk through these three rules. Uh, and the first one out of 490, 489 cases, in this case, 489, uh, customers with the following conditions that had total night minutes bigger than 174, total evening min minutes bigger than 241, total day minutes bigger than 224, out of those, 82% of those churned. So um, another one was just one, uh, you know, one branch. Um, out of 416 cases that had international plan equals to yes, meaning they had an international plan, 61% of those ended up churning. And out of 348 cases, that had these two rules, these two branches, these two conditions, uh, total day charge was less than 38.25, and it had call customer service uh, uh, more than three times, 70% of those ended up churning. So 70% of those ended up leaving. So uh, as a data scientist, if you don't know their data, their, you know, what, what their business is, this might not mean much to you, but uh, you, you, you just, you'd, you'd hope that for the, 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 the business owner, this would mean a lot, right? For example, if, 61% of the uh, of, of its customers that have an international plan end up uh, a leaving, right? You know, they could maybe say, well, why are they leaving? Maybe the prices are too high. Maybe it's too complicated. Uh, you know, maybe not catering to them in the right way. Same thing for this, right? Why are 82% of these power users that use a little bit of everything, 82% of them churn, right? Maybe, um, uh, you know, the, the, it's too complicated to, um, you know, to, to, to work or maybe uh, for power users, uh, it's, uh, you know, the service is a bit weak, whatever, right? Uh, these are insights for um, uh, the business owner could be very useful. And what's interesting is us as data scientists, we can actually provide these without really knowing what, what you know, their business is about. So we can, you know, very quickly get a crash course and return something uh, interesting from their data about their business. Let's just jump right in. I'm going to uh, bring this into R and run it. Again, if you don't have um, C5, uh, you need to install it. It's, it's capital C, five, zero, install it. And the data churn packet, uh, the, 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 the data called churn in this library has two data sets. One is called churn train and one is called churn test. We don't really care about that because we're not going to validate what we're doing. So you can either use churn train, test, or you can even bind them together if you want more data. It does not matter. 
I like to break out my uh, outcome name uh, into its own variable like that if you know you get a new data set with a different outcome or you want to change outcomes it's easy to do you don't have to rewrite much of your code you just have to change uh, you know this 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 variable here um, also this is um, interesting is um, C5 can work with categorical data you don't need to dumbify it I mean, you don't need to you know make its own dummy columns and uh, so the closer it is to the English language, the clearer your reports are going to be. Same thing with the outcome variable. The outcome variable here is uh, uh, churn, uh, whether they're going to churn, yes or no. And that's not very clear. Instead, I'm saying, I'm changing it to whenever it's yes, I'm going to add does churn. When it's no, I say stays, right? It's just going to make things clearer in the report. Instead of yes, no, we're going to have does churn or stays. Okay, so I think I ran this. I'll run it again. And you can see a quick look at the data, right? A bunch of, you know, uh, factors, you know, categories. Those are good, right? Because those are, those are going to come out in the report nicely formatted. Um, and a series of numerical variables, whether, you know, the usage uh, minutes and charges for this particular customer, how many times they called customer service. That's important. You imagine the more they, they called, you know, the, the, the unhappier they are with the service and whether they churned or they stayed. Um Okay, here's the data. Um, let's run the C5 model, the basic version of the model, right? So the C5 algorithm, it, the, the function call is C5.0. It's, it's a, a, an interesting uh, uh, call, but that's what it is, right? This is gonna run the C5 model. And let me just make this clear here. I'm actually gonna remove this there. So this is a very basic, I took the, mo I took the data, I'm saying x is equal to the predictor names. Well, what you're going to use to predict. So basically, all the features except the outcome. And y is what you're predicting the outcome, right? So I'm going to run this. Make it large. And you're going to see it returns, you know. Um, if you're familiar with tree-based model, it really returns a tree, right? Here is a tree, you know, built with all these branches. Um, if you want to understand it, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely readable, you know. Uh, for this, you know, for this tree, this is the most important branch. Total day minutes has to be bigger than 264. Those that have a voicemail plan, they split into two groups. Those with a voicemail plan and international plan and don't have an international <laughs> and don't have an international plan, uh, we found 45 cases in the data, and uh, all of them ended up staying except one. Same thing. Those that have these day minutes, this voicemail plan, and who do have an international plan versus those who don't, right? Those who do have the international plan, we found eight of those have fulfilled these three conditions, and um, you know, uh, uh, five ended up uh, churning, and three uh, st uh, uh, ended up staying, right? So that's how you read it, right? So even I am kind of, you know, tripping over myself to describe it, and that's just a very simple, the first three, first four lines of the data, right? Um, Imagine how it is once you get these larger rules that are very complicated. So thankfully, um, you can set the flag rules equals true. So same data, right? Except rules equals true, but by default it's false. You run it. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take these, these big trees and break them into single rules. And so you're gonna have a lot more rules and you had trees, obviously. And here it's a little bit easier to, to read, it's compact, right? So um, rule number one, those who had an international plan to yes, who had less than two or two international calls for the class does churn, meaning are leaving, we found 60 cases that fulfilled that and every single one of them ended up churning. You'll see there is a forward slash for those where you know some of them were misclassified, didn't you know, do whatever the outcome is. So it's a lot easier to read, right, than the other one. I didn't trip on myself here trying to describe it to you. It's a lot easier. And this, we're getting slowly getting closer to something we can automate into a reporting pipeline. Um, again, this, um, you know, this is not a data frame. So that's one thing I read on, on, uh, on Stack Overflow where people say, hey, you know, we'd like to get this into a data frame so we can then do whatever we want with it. So it's automatic. And, you know, I was in the same situation. Um, so, one thing that, um, uh, well, here, let me do this. So C5 does return a series 
of uh, results that you can access programmatically, uh, all of these, including one called rules, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So yes, you can gather that information automatically, but it's a mess. This is what it returns, right? This is, you know, bordering incompre incomprehensible. What we end up doing, and it's ugly, we're going to string split our way out of this. So, and this is really kind of the engine of it. If you just want to know how to do that, then this is the part you pay attention and you can ignore the rest afterwards. We simply use the capture output format, kind of takes the, the when you get, when you do print, it's a nice, it's nicely formatted. That's what capture output gives you. And we then say, uh, split everything, you know, uh, that has a, a new line. We want to split it by that. And then we want to remove all these ugly, you know, backslashes, right? We want to remove them. And let's see what this rule monger transformation gives you. Ooh, look at that. It's now returning something that's starting to look like a structured format, right? Well, not really a structured format, more like, you know, a, a line by line uh, format um, uh, with, you know, at least legible, very legible information. So we're getting to where we want to go. It's still not where we want to do because um, in order to be a really structured, a truly structured format, you want to have everything on a single line. And we do that and we don't do that. Um, what I ended up doing is that, for example, entries I ignored, rules you can ignore, and then I combine the condition line with each one of the type lines. So in this case, right, this is one rule, right? It says this is one rule that has two uh, 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 um, conditions. Uh, we're going to make, out of these three lines, I'm going to make two lines. And I'm basically going to take the cover, the lift, and add it to each one of the, the actual rules. And like that, it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, let me show you what I did. I ended up doing a function, so it's going to be easier for you to um, to use it. I'm going to try to explain it a little bit, though it's it's big. But let me give it a whirl. I'll load it in memory. So simply, you know, you pass your data frame. In this case, our churn data, the outcome variable. It'll do everything what you need. Uh, we're using dplyr. First call is basically simply running the C5 model, like I showed you, with rule set to true. Then we rule, we use this rule monger, exactly like I showed you. And then we're going to loop through each rule result. So imagine here, where were we here? All right? This is the rule monger's output. We're going to loop through each one of them, take what we want, remove, chuck what we don't want. So through rules monger. So I am, you know, as a convenience, I'm saying, hey, oh, this is a rules. Okay, I'll say, in this case, there are 19 rules. It's just nice to see a printout. Oh, we're going we're gonna to build 19 rules, right? So we're only interested in two uh, um, uh, lines. Those that start with condition and those that start with type, right? Condition holds, you know, the, the overall how many rules, there, how many branches there are, how, what's the lift of that model. And that's all, that's all we're going to do. We're basically going to string slip, string strip uh, using the equal sign. And that's what I'm doing here, right? So in this case, condition has the first one is how many, you know, conditions, how many branches you have to your rule. The second equal sign is the cover. The third, it, the third is the true positive. How many were, were uh, out of these, how many were correctly classified for this outcome? And, and so on and so forth. That's all I do for conditions. String split it by the equal sign and then collect them individually and then store each result in these variables. It's pretty simple. Then when you get to type, okay, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, here, and let me show you, what's the best place to show you this? It's here. Um, um, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the type, right, the conditions is always the same thing. Always have, you know, cover, lift, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the condition is different. If it's a categorical va variable, it's going to return the attribute and the value, this Boolean value, true, false. If it's a numerical uh, uh, output, it's going to return a larger, equal, or smaller, and the, uh, the actual you know, numerical variable. And it's also one not showing here, is if it's categorical, uh, it will return an ELTS, and that will be basically comma delimited of every one of those categories that fulfill that specific condition. That's all we're doing here, right? And that's why there's some optional sniffing because you gotta say, does this have a numerical value variable? No, so don't bother, you know, looking for it because it's not going to be there. And finally, we bind everything into a rule 
we return the rule. You know, I'm changing the rule, which is a matrix into a data frame, so I can give it some customized, uh, um, uh, customized headers, and also I am uh, ordering it by lift. So the strongest that provides the most lift is going to be on the top of uh, the data frame, the, 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 the you know the um, the returning data frame. So let me just load that in memory. Oh, I already did it. Okay, cool. And let me show you how it works. And here, let's just clean out. I'm going to do head on results. Let's see if I can have it in one line. It would be much better. Okay, almost one line. So here, so instead, so instead, the, the conditions and types are now all compressed. So every, it's only going to be one line per type. And the condition is now injected in the type itself. So that branch. So rule number one, this is the ID, has two conditions, so two branches. Uh, here's the cover, uh, the lift, right? Uh, condition, uh, branch number one, branch number two. And the attribute is called international plan. And if it's yes, and total international calls, if it's smaller than two, it says doesn't churn. Right? So you're starting to see that now you can start um, building this into a report. It's a data frame. Uh, it's a lot easier now to gather, to take that information and to build it into a report. Um, it's a fully, it's fully, you know, a structured data frame. And as a convenience, I'm building a simple, uh, another function, which this one I won't go into much detail because this is really, you can do whatever you want. This function is simply a way of grabbing the structured information and presenting it into a report. And let me give you a sample of that. Actually, let's do it here. And there you have it, right? I chose to say, I'm injecting my own uh, wording. So I'm gonna say rule number one, in 60 cases, 100% of the customers do churn when instead does churn, I should have said do churn, even easier to read. When they have an international plan to yes, and total international calls is less than two. Rule number two in 57 cases, so 57 you know customers, 100% uh, of the customers do churn when international plan equals yes, and total international minutes is larger than 13.1. So you get you get the point here, right? I took this is this is this is secondary this this last function so I'm not going to go into much detail it's just a way of, of, of tying that information into your report the important thing is extracting out of c5 this structured data format of all the rules in, in, in a real structured format and you, you know the sky's the limit you can put this into an automated pipeline you know spit out reports on a daily basis um, that's all I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you know you found this in, you know, useful, and you will you know maybe use it into your own work. Two things I want to say: Carrot does have an implementation, so look at Carrot, C A R E T, and Party Kit as well do have you know a similar in, in, um, implementation of getting you know C five and some other models into a more you know friendly data frame uh, uh, format. I thought it was a lot easier for me to build my own, so then I have full control, and it's really not that complicated, right? It's a little bit you know confusing with the string splits, but once it's done. You know, uh, and it works. You know, you can then very easily build build out reports. So, for more information, anything else you want, you know, please go to you know um, the blog, which is right here, right? I'm you know constantly putting up new blogs. Uh, please go there, and uh, uh, thank you for watching.